but it's a sunny morning I'm cycling to work I'm thinking we should probably do another anatomy video this week we're doing a couple of sessions looking at the heart maybe we should talk about the heart not bad huh? the chambers of the heart and the valves of the heart that sort of thing maybe we'll rush through that more about the uh, electrical system of the heart let's think about how the electrical impulses how the nervous impulses travel through the heart how they control the contractions of the atria and the ventricles uh, let's talk about like the sinoatrial node and the atria of the ventricular node where they are um, how the nervous system interacts with the heart to control the, the rate of contraction and, and that sort of thing. Hey, it's sunny outside. Let's go outside and do this. Let's do this on the beach. Let's go for a run. Okay, so. I'm out for a, an easy Friday afternoon run on the beach. It's a new thing I've added recently. I usually swim in the afternoon, but since I've been recovering from this tendon injury, I thought I'd start adding uh, some more terminal Friday afternoon runs along the beach. It's nice and easy. Sometimes it's windy. It doesn't seem very windy today. It's very pretty. Tide's a little way out today. We'll run down to the tide in a bit. And since I've got a short 30 minute run, I thought I'd talk to you guys about the heart while I'm running. Like I said, let's skip much of the heart anatomy. So, the heart's got four chambers. The superior and inferior vena cava drain into the uh, right atrium. The right atrium pushes blood through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. The right ventricle pushes blood out into the pulmonary trunk and into the two lungs and then blood comes out of the lungs in the pulmonary veins into the left side of the heart into the left atrium then the left atrium squeezes pushes blood through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle and then the left ventricle has got the big job of pushing really hard pushing all the blood out of the left ventricle through the aorta and essentially around the body so, you know all that stuff. Let's talk about the electrical activity. How is all that coordinated? So, the sinoatrial node initiates the contraction of the heart. It sends out an electrical impulse that then travels down the myometrium, the muscles, the muscle wall of the atria. It causes the two atria to contract, so they contract and squeeze and they pass blood through the two atrioventricular valves, the bicuspid and tricuspid valves, and the blood goes into the ventricles. Now, that wave of electrical activity can't pass directly through to the ventricles. The heart has a collagenous fibrous skeleton, and if you think about where the four valves are, the valves to the great vessels and the valves between the atria and the ventricles, they're kind of close together. Have a look on a model. And supporting those valves, we have this fibrous skeleton of the heart. And that's important because the valves, there's a lot of pressure in the heart. The heart keeps squeezing, pushing blood through, and dilating, pulling blood in and squeezing and the valves are crucial to this happening normally. Now, the valves have got to be held in place. So the skeleton reinforces the circumference of the valves. If, if the valves were able to stretch and get bigger and smaller, then the leaflets in the middle wouldn't work. So the valve wouldn't work, so blood would leak through. So this fibrous skeleton 
reinforces the valves and let them, lets them work properly. Now, that fibrous skeleton is also an insulator. So the atria are insulated from the ventricles in terms of electrical activity and electrical waves of propag propagation. So you find between the atria and the ventricles, and this is in the, the septum between the atria, low down posteriorly, you find the AV node, the atrioventricular node. And that wave of nervous ex excitation, electrical excitation, passes to the AV node. The AV node receives it and passes it on through some specialised nerve fibres um, in the AV bundle, which used to be called the bundle of bundles of Hiss. And these bundles carry the excitation down the uh, septa, the septum between the ventricles, towards the, the base of the heart and the apex of the heart. And then that electrical activity is passed over to the Purkinje fibres, uh, endocardial fibres they're called these days, and those carry the excitation out into the walls of the ventricles. Now if you think about it that makes sense because the ventricles have got to contract not from the top down like the atria but from the bottom up because they're going to squeeze the blood upwards and outwards through upwards and outwards through the semilunar valves and into the pulmonary trunk and the aorta, right? So that means the wave of that excitation is carried down to the bottom of the heart and then it's fed to the myocardium, the muscles of the heart and then the myocardium contracts. It's not bad this, is it? I mean, this is one of the main reasons for staying in Swansea. It's the Gower, the beaches, the sea and the anatomy team that I work with. It's good fun. Uh, to be honest, the weather's not usually this good. Okay, that's, that's not entirely true. The weather is often this good, but it also often rains for long periods of time. Anyway, where were we? Yeah, so the layers of myocardium, the muscle in the ventricles and in the heart, are actually running obliquely. Um, and there are two layers. Essentially what this means is that when those muscles contract, they squeeze and they wring the heart out, so they push the blood out from the base of the heart, from the apex, and push it upwards, out through the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. Tidy, huh? So right now, my heart rate's in the mid 140s, which for me is a good aerobic effort. See, I can talk at this pace. I can run at this pace for hours and be fairly comfortable. It's worth holding on to a camera and a recording thingy. My arm's getting tired. But my heart rate at this pace is very regular. And that's the sign of atrial node. So the sign of atrial node receives fibres from the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves, parts of the autonomic nervous system. So the autonomic nervous system controls the automatic parts of the body, the bits we don't think about. The somatic nervous system, that controls the things we do think about. So the muscles that I'm moving now, the skeletal muscles, the things I can think about and make move, those are all in the somatic control. Uh, the sensation from my skin of the sea splashing on my calves, that's somatic. Whereas the sensory information is telling my brain how fast my heart should beat, that's autonomic. So in the heart, ooh, I'm getting to my turnaround point. So in the heart, the, uh, there's a cardiac plexus, which is a mixed plexus of sympathetic and parasympathetic. That's a mixed plexus of sympathetic and parasympathetic fibres, which are, the plexus is between the uh, trachea and the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. Time to turn around, I think. So in the case of the heart, I might be in silhouette now, but hey, you can see the sea, it's pretty, prettier than me. Um, so in the heart, 
the sympathetic nervous system will increase the rate of contractions so your heart, beat, heart will beat faster and it will increase the force of contraction so it will push more blood so that's the sympathetic nervous system also well let's say that the first of the parasympathetic nervous system does the opposite so the parasympathetic nerves to the sinoatrial node will cause it to decrease the rate of contractions and decrease the force of contraction so the sympathetic and, nerve, and parasympathetic nervous systems in this case are working together the other thing that happens is that when so if I slow down and my heart rate starts to go down the parasympathetic system is slowing my heart rate reducing the rate of the force of the contractions and it's also reducing the amount of blood flowing through the coronary arteries so it's saving energy it's causing vasoconstriction which is a little unusual for the parasympathetic nervous system now so my heart rate down to 136 as I speed up the sympathetic nervous system will act on the sinoatrial node and will cause my heart to beat faster and the contractions to be more forceful and it will also cause my coronary arteries to dilate so the, the muscle of the heart will get more blood through the coronary arteries so it can do more work so my heart rate so my heart rate's now going up towards 160 and that's the sympathetic nervous system acting so if I ease up now the activity of the sympathetic nervous system will drop off the activity of the parasympathetic nervous system so the SA node will increase and as my muscles start to recover not yet my heart rate will start to go down and so will the force of contractions now the I think we can talk about the anatomy of the nervous system in more detail somewhere else but um, oh, I'm not as fit as I thought I was actually no, I'm not that fit I'm not as fit as I was earlier this year before my injury um, the sympathetic nerves acting on the SA node are adrenergic that means that the molecules causing the, the link between the nerves and what have you and the receptors is adrenaline or noradrenaline based whereas the parasympathetic neurons are acetylcholine based now you know that when you have the fight or flight response when you get an adrenaline rush when you get the fear or when before a race uh, Okay, even after I've warmed up after I've warmed up and I'm getting ready for uh, the start I can see on my heart rate monitor that my heart rate is elevated usually above 100 beats per minute before the race now because my body knows a big effort is coming up and that is caused by adrenaline released by the adrenal glands flowing around the body and having all sorts of effects around the body like restricting blood flow to the GI tract sending it to the muscles, releasing glucose, making your heart beat faster, basically getting you ready to, to fight or, or run away. In the case of a race, getting ready to run away. Um, and that adrenaline will act on the receptors in the SA node directly. So instead of having adrenaline and noradrenaline passed across the synapse, the adrenaline from the blood will act directly on the adrenergic receptors and cause your heart rate to increase and uh, the force of contractions to increase which is pretty clever that cafe over there is nice so I'm running in Swansea Bay between the university and the um, marina they do really nice sweet potato wedges ok so we've talked about the structure of the heart very basically we've talked about how the flow of excitation passes from the SA node to the AV node through the AV bundle 
out to the endocardial fibres and then causing the ventricles to contract from the bottom up. Um, we talked a little bit about sympathetic and parasympathetic innervation to the, uh, to the heart. Now I'm coming to the end of my run. It's been lovely and sunny and blue skies and it's on a beach. What's not to love? So maybe holding this camera up. Uh, and now I've got to find my way back through these sand dunes. Uh, it's one of these. See that one? Mm -hmm.